Hey guys, so this is an updated version of the settings video that I made about a month ago. Some things have changed and I get asked so much about my settings and whatnot. So this video is for those of you out there that, that care about my settings and you're looking for some improvements yourself or if you have some questions about some of the settings in the menu that you can change. The game does a really good job about explaining it itself. It's got dialogue on the right hand side in the settings that basically goes over everything into detail but sometimes people don't fully understand that. So I'm going to go over everything in the settings menu, but for the basic stuff, I'm just going to briefly touch on it and move on because I feel like most of that should be self-explanatory. Uh, the more advanced stuff I'll go into detail with, I'll try to go into detail with at least with as much knowledge as I have. Um, we'll go into detail about the aim settings and stuff like that. But first and foremost, I do need to say that these are my settings. And what works for me may not work for you, okay? Especially when we're talking about sensitivity or uh, aim settings in general, right? So what works for me may not work for you. So fiddle around with it yourself. I'll, I'll give you an explanation and some basis around the settings I use, but for the most part, you're gonna have to find what works for you yourself, okay? So let's get right into it. So starting from the top and working all the way down to the bottom, first and foremost, you have interact prompt style. I keep this on compact. This is completely up to you. I think it just looks cleaner on the screen. By having it on default, it just gives you more information about the items that you're picking up. I like it on compact. It looks better. Next, button hints. I have that also set to off. For most of the videos that you see coming out right now, I have it set to on. All that does is just get rid of the buttons that you see on the screen, right? Then you got crosshair damage feedback, damage with the shield icon, obviously. No, I feel like you have to have it set to that. Now here's where things change from the first one. I switched my damage numbers back to stacking. In the video that I made prior, I said to keep it on floating. That was, I still like it, I stand by it, but it doesn't work with shotguns. That's the problem. That's the biggest problem I found. So using the, uh, the EVA 8 or the Peacekeeper, you have to have it on stacking, otherwise you're just going to see a bunch of numbers. You don't have one solid number, you just have a bunch of floating numbers. And that's a no-go. That don't work whatsoever. So, in my opinion, now, keep it on stacking. Keep it on stacking. <laughs> I, okay, I was wrong. I was wrong on the first one, okay? I'll take it. Uh, then you got, you got obituaries, which is your kill feed. Keep that on. Uh, damage feedback, 3D, streamer mode, you know what that is. Use of sharing, blah, 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 all that other jazz. Now we got button layout and stick layout. This game is awesome because it gives you a bunch of customizations that you can do to your buttons. I play on default, both button and on stick layout. The reason for that is because I play with a Battle Beaver controller. It's a custom controller. You probably have heard of a scuff controller. It is similar to a scuff, but instead of paddles on the back, it's got buttons. So my jump and my crouch button are on the back of my controller so I can jump and crouch without moving my right thumb off of the thumbstick or without playing claw. So. I keep that both keep both those on default I don't need to change them if you feel the need to change them once again completely up to you that is no biggie uh, interact reload whatever crouch button I have set to hold okay you have to have it set to hold if you want a bunny hop to bunny hop on console you need to have it set to hold I could make an entire video just teaching you guys on how to bunny hop but we'll go over that another time if you want to do it you have to have it on hold now we've got the L2 R2 button dead zones what dead zone means is the dead zone is when your button will activate. So your L2 and your R2 are triggers, unless you have a custom controller like myself or anybody else that has one, whatever. Uh, my L2, R2 are actually buttons, but if you have the stock DualShock controller, they are triggers. Uh, the dead zone means it will activate sooner. So what you can do is, is you can change the dead zone. So if you barely touch your L2 or R2 button, the button will activate. You don't have to fully press the L2, R2. So if you wanna change it, that's completely up to you. Now we got sensitivity. And this is kind of where things change. So I encourage you guys to play on a lower sensitivity. I play on a higher sensitivity because I've been playing games for literally forever and I've always played on a high sensitivity so I'm used to it. Chances are you're watching this video because you're not a, an insane player at the game yet and you're still trying to learn, right? So if you are watching this and you are trying to learn and you're not very good at aiming, please, please, please do yourself a favor and play on a lower sensitivity until you're, at least until you're used to it. You can slowly turn it up once you get used to it, but I recommend keeping it on a lower sensitivity for now. So next we have the complicated stuff. This is where people just get lost. Response curves, okay? Now these are different aiming methods that you can have with a controller. Uh, if you played Overwatch, these are similar to what you have in Overwatch. I will add a graph onto the screen right now so you can make a comparison here. Credits to uh, N7 Titan, by the way. Thank you for the fantastic graph. I found him on Reddit. <laughs> Anyways, as you can see on the graph, the names are a little bit different. Yellow 
represents linear ramp, red is dual zone, and blue is exponential ramp, okay? Now, the response curves that you have in this game are classic, steady, fine, and high, and linear, okay? So, there's a description on the right-hand side that tells you what the response curves are. First and foremost, I just recommend keeping it on, on the classic. It's a fantastic aiming system. It is similar to every game that you've ever played. If you've ever played any Call of Duty, uh, Battlefield, basically any first-person shooter, with the exceptions to Overwatch and I think Destiny. I'm pretty sure Destiny had a different aiming system because Destiny did feel a, a little bit weird. I think Destiny was more of a dual zone, but regardless, whatever. So I'm going to briefly explain you can use the chart for reference and you can understand it that way, okay? So, first and foremost, steady is similar to dual zone. Uh, by the way, these numbers aren't going to be 100% accurate, but the lines are, the, the, the way that the sensitivity works. So, if you move your right stick to about the 80-90% mark, you're only going to have, you know, less than 50% of your sensitivity. And then once you pass that threshold, it's just going to skyrocket. That's what steady aim does. So, steady aim allows you to make accurate accurate adjustments but it also allows you to be fast at the same time if you max your stick out okay so if you play dual zone on overwatch steady aim is the setting for you uh next is fine aim now fine aim is similar to exponential ramp which is basically like a combo of dual zone and linear it'll slowly ramp up now high velocity is basically full sensitivity at all times High, high velocity is not on the chart. High velocity is like, there is no ramp up. High velocity is always fast. Uh, then you have linear, which is, uh, sorry, linear, which is yellow on the graph, which is also linear on the graph. <laughs> I, got, I got a little mind fart there. It was weird. So anyways, linear, it just goes up. If you move your stick 20%, you're going to have 20% of your, of your sensitivity. So if you want to experiment with any of those settings, by all means, go right ahead. But I play on classic. I recommend you to play on classic uh, next we have the dead zones look and movement dead zone similar to the l2 r2 dead zones it is when your sticks will activate so they add this setting in here for people that have really old controllers have you ever had a controller that's just sitting on your desk and your character will just walk on its own or the right stick for example your your, your crosshairs will just start drifting by itself that's because your controller is on its way out um they add this setting in here that if your controllers are drifting on their own, you can change the dead zones to large and it'll let your controller last a little bit longer, which is really nice. It doesn't You don't have to buy a new controller right off rip, right? So like, lots of other games, if your controller starts drifting, there is no fix. You, you gotta buy a new controller, but at least here, you can change the dead zones to large and your controller will last a little bit longer. So that's really good. And then we've got inverted look vibration and advanced look control. So inverted look vibration, you do you, whatever you like. But then they added the advanced control option. I do not recommend touching any of this. Personally, if you want to go in there and mess around with it, by all means, you do your thing. Everything is detailed on the right-hand side. There is a really nice description about everything. Uh, we've talked about dead zones, the thresholds, response curves, target composition, which is aim assist. You've got the yaw speed and the pitch seed, which yaw, I'm pretty sure, is left and right, and pitch is up and down. Uh, wh whichever. You, you, you do you. You go over them. If you want to mess with this, by all means. I, I have no interest in touching any of this stuff. <laughs> all right, so let's get out of the advanced control settings, and we're going to move on to the video tab. There's an important setting in there called field of view. Now, you can turn it up. You, if you don't want to, you don't have to. It all depends on your play style. I do encourage it. The problem with turning up your field of view is that if you're playing on console, you're going to lose frames. Uh, I basically stopped playing Bloodhound because of that reason. Uh, every time you pop your ultimate or if there's a bunch of Bangalore smoke or something, but your console just, it dies. You lose all your frames, it lags so bad, it's really hard to do anything. So I have it set to 100. You play with whatever's comfortable for you. Uh, I believe default is 70. So if you want to keep it on default, by all means, if you want to turn it up, by all means. I do not recommend maxing it out though. Do not do that because your, your PS4 is going to have a hard time run it as soon as too much stuff gets on the screen it's gonna you're it's gonna run really loud the fans gonna be kicking in Ech. uh now we have audio you do whatever you want to do with audio i have it set so my recordings sound better with uh, my commentary and whatnot but anyways that is all the settings so with all of that said those are my settings but i do need to reiterate and say what i said at the beginning one more time because a, a lot of people don't seem to understand this 
these are my settings and they're my settings because I'm comfortable with them. Uh, you may not find them working, you know what I mean? Like you might find them awkward, the sensitivity might not work, whatever. You might be better playing on exponential ramp or linear ramp or whatever, right? You gotta tweak your settings and find whatever works for you because everybody is different. Like, even field of view, right? Like you might be playing on a TV rather than a monitor. And if you're sitting on your couch playing on playing on a 40 inch TV, then you're probably not gonna wanna touch your field of view. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're gonna have to find your own settings and work around that. But anyways, guys, I hope you did find a little bit of this useful at least. I've been asked so much about the sensitivity and all my settings and stuff. I I figured I had to make this video. I get, <laughs> you can only get asked the question so many times until you're like, God, I get, just gotta go ahead and make it. <laughs> so anyways, that is all. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I'll uh, see you guys on the next video.